Thank you for tuning in. Hello and welcome to the Brooklyn Rails 1038th New Social Environment. I'm Eleanor, a Programs Associate here at The Rail, and today I have the huge pleasure and privilege of being your MC for a conversation with Canada founders Sarah Brayman, Phil Grauer, and Wallace Whitney, and artists who work at or are represented by Canada, Joe DiNardo, Stuart Lorimer, Carrie Chilnoki, Michael Mahalchuk, and Violet Webster, hosted by Lily Way. Before we get started, I'll share a bit about Canada and about Lily Way. Canada was founded in Lower Manhattan in 1999 by a small group of artists committed to promoting the needs and energies of an improvised community. With two locations in Tribeca, Canada remains unconventional in its structure and divergent in its programming. We'll hear more about that in a little bit. Our host today, New York-based independent curator, writer, journalist, and critic Lily Wei, writes on global contemporary art and emerging artists, reporting frequently on international exhibitions and biennials. She's written for dozens of publications here and abroad and is a longtime contributor to Art in America and a contributing editor at Artnet at Art News. She is the author of numerous artist catalogs and monographs and has curated exhibitions here in the US and in Europe and Asia. She is a fellow and treasurer of the board of directors of the Q Arts Foundation. Thank you so much, Lily, and everyone for being here today. And I'm so thrilled to pass it over to you, Lily, to get us started. Well, uh, thank you, Eleanor. And um, thank you uh, for all the people from Canada. Uh, I have known about Canada for for many years, and um, I, I, I think we'll start off with just a, a, a brief history of its founding. Uh, like, what was the igniting spark? Um, how, who pulled the light bulb? How, how did that happen? Number one, and maybe even before that, uh, we had just mentioned. A, uh, Eleanor, you were corrected by I believe Wallace about the name of the gallery that it is not. Canada Gallery, but it's Canada. And I have a vague recollection of um, a memory of why it was called Canada. So perhaps we start with that and then we go on to the the, the founding, um, you, you know, the founding yeah. of it. Yeah. Who's Phil, gonna- do wanna, Phil, do you wanna jump in on the name and the founding? Um, Aren't they simultaneous? Oh, Phil, okay. I mean, the name. Uh, I think we, it was sort of a, um, what was it? There was a, like, there was a group of, you know, we were all kind of out of schools or some weren't in schools, but there's just a group of people um, kind of faced with uh, wanting to kind of hold, shut, you know, put on exhibitions um, in, in, in some kind of, framework of a of a room and and we just kind of wanted to keep a group of artists kind of working uh closely together i think supporting each other i think it was kind of the the, the hope or the thinking and uh and and then just kind of grew out of that kind of desire and i think that at the time it was kind of felt like there was a a kind of this group of impenetrable kind of chelsea galleries that would maybe pull someone in for a group show or you know and this was a, a big deal and it just seemed kind of arbitrary and uh kind of defeating of a kind of community so we just decided to kind of sort of find find a way to pay rent on some space and uh kind of show each other stuff and the the the, the name was just kind of like uh cooked up I think at the there's there was a few kind of reasons at the time I remember American fine arts was kind of around and and it was seemed like kind of some hipster cool bastion and so it seemed like Canada was sort of you know less than that and uh, maybe appropriate somehow you know and there were other reasons it was just kind of outsidery other and I kind of liked this kind of like this kind of taking down the kind of Olympics of art, you know, like, you know, and, and it just seemed like what country would provide that without getting too knotted into, you know, the, you know, 
politics and you know kind of uh, the ethics of uh um yeah kind of nationalities and uh you know political tribes and stuff so and it was and it was sort of figured that canada would could kind of sustain this dilemma best i think that's kind of how i remember it anyway <laughs> That's, yeah, that's, that's, everyone that's, knows that, about Canada, but, but what? That's, that sounds good to me. That's, uh, that's, is that, is that fair? It was, with? It was during right. Bush, Bush era. Yeah, right. or near Bush. You know, I was sort of like draft dodger. I remember, I remember the school that I went to in Nova Scotia was kind of like a. It was an American school set up by you know a Canadian guy and American you know grad students from mostly from. Uh, the, you know the midwest um and uh and they kind of took over the seaside painting school and then they sort of flooded the thing with a uh, conceptual art you know new york guys that were large sort of avoiding the draft and so this this idea of canada as a kind of a draft dodging you know place of of uh you know kind of uh, outside of the political war machine of America or something is kind of a safe place or where the animals live or something. So it's kind of, you know, and yeah. it, I, I think that the country's kind of had that ID or that word, that Canada word kind of goes back to, you know, even European refugees uh, out of the Holocaust, you know, and, 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 and out of the, you know, kind of World War II period and stuff. So it sort of has, you know, it's kind of lingering kind of, Valhalla, Valhalla, or something like that. Yeah. If you thought of it more more positively, it would be a, a place where the where conscientious objectors went rather than rather you know, than draft dodgers. Well, if you, you yeah. Have yeah, 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 yeah. Trying to say, I can see. Way, way better put. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's Thanks, the more though. that's the more optimistic way of <laughs> phrasing it. Yeah, for sure. No, but I was just going to say that. Uh, yeah, that all that sounds totally totally true. Um, but I also think, you know, the fact that it's a First Nations word, I think, was always sort of interesting. And I think visually there's uh, the shapes, the C, the A, the N. It was all this all caps thing that I think became like a form in a certain sense that I, that I think, yeah, that, that it, it's, it's a the type of typographically or something almost. I think it works. And it has a nice rhythm as well. It's not, uh, you know, I, th I think there's, I think there, and and I think the irony is uh, embedded in what Phil was saying. But uh, that that sort of um, uh, avoidant, um, you know, sort of the indirect approach, I think, of the gallery is is um, a part of a part of the uh, ethos. And I think the name fits that as well, even though it's not clear, you know. So, um, Sarah? <laughs> oh, yeah. I was just going to say, these are a lot of Mahalchik's installations that we were looking at right now. Um, yeah, I thought, I I don't have much to add. It All those things that, that Phil said, and it looked good in print. It um, And I think it also is, it's like, we didn't expect it to really last. So we didn't, it's not like we actually put that much time and, you know, it's not like we really thought about it that much. It was just went with a name and right. You know, but I'm uh, putting some art shows up because that's what we were doing. It wasn't um, <laughs> it wasn't a super heavy decision. Mm -hmm. at the time. Was, if you if it if anyone, you know, if it, if it lasted a year, I think we'd all consider it kind of a miracle. Yeah, um, right. It's kind of an annoying it's in, you know, Canadians come and expect to maybe be able to get shows and <laughs> it kind of annoys Americans. They think it's kind of like not very patriotic or it's some, you know, why should they buy art from something named after that country? You know, it's, 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 it's been problematic. We should probably change the name. <laughs> yeah, we well, just a little bit right. about the nuts and bolts. No, don't change it. <laughs> It, um, I mean, Brooklyn Rail is a pretty dumb name, too. If you really think about it. Yeah. Uh, isn't it just descriptive? <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> no, but the nuts and bolts of it. So you decided you were going to have this gallery. And um, wh wh where was your first space? And, and you know, was that easy? Or were you just 
It was this was, is it was, it was, it was very yeah, easy. It was, it was very it was very easy. Cheap. Okay. Yeah, it was, the the rent was low, and we could afford to all chip in to cover it by you know because so, I think it was five hundred dollars or six hundred bucks or something. So it was mostly just price consideration. So the first site was. Uh, the first site was in uh, Tribeca in a sub basement. Uh huh. Okay. 365 uh, Broadway, right? Uh, yeah, something like that between three, Franca and Leonard. It was right next to where I lived. My goodness. Yeah, you could yeah. have uh, stopped in and helped to sheetrock it. I'm like, gee, I, you should have asked. And then, yeah. and then it got it got interrupted a year or two later with the 9/11 closures. So we were we were we had an opening, and then the event thing ha happened, and we 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 were we had to close down because we were in that area so we were we and 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 miraculously i remember we had paid our taxes or we at least filed to pay taxes so we qualified as a as a legitimate business which was hilarious and we got uh fema money to oh, bail right. us bail us out and so that allowed us to move to christie street uh with a little bit of money for build out on uh, federal cash mm-hmm and did you stay there for a while with that? This space that was a long, that was a real long, normal lease. And right, so, yeah. you know, it was like whatever, five or 10 years and, and all that. And, and it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was a serious problem at that point. Cause it was, it was going to require a kind of consistent effort. And, uh, and, and I, yeah, I, that was kind of when it, became a little bit legitimate but it was also in a, a part of the lower east side that was not it wasn't really a gallery community so we were a little bit a, a, away from whatever art community art gallery community there was and that, that took took a little bit you know effort to some of those navigate. some of those early slides were of um david askable like the um the conjuring of two hanks and i think there's one couple later um yeah, this one and the next one. And then there's a, uh, I think that show was up in the second space in the in the Broadway space and Roberta Smith recognized his name, right? And came in. Yeah, David was a first generation, um, you know, co conceptual artist and, and photo photo kind of driven guy. And he was up in, uh, up in the college in Nova Scotia and he came down and did performances for us early on and I and and Roberta yeah Roberta kind of came in because she recognized and it was like what's David Askable doing showing down there and then she came in I remember one of her earliest the early questions Roberta had for us was like what is your rent and how long is your lease you know she really wanted to know like how how legitimate is this operation She's a and, New Yorker. We all know. We all want to know about real estate rents. Real, real practical, you know. Question and 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 David was, uh, you know, doing this kind of weird performance where he was conjuring, uh, Hank Williams with a bunch of dry ice and a, uh, he hired a zither player and uh and and he was projecting, and he was playing uh, he, the bass guitar and he was and there was uh Hank Williams music playing. It was pretty weird. It was in the dark. So a lot of these, you know, these captured, these stills were captured, you know, by, I don't know, infrared camera or whatever it is that captures night, night vision. Mm -hmm. so, so you started out with the three of you. How did you, how did you begin to grow or who? I should say right off where I, I texted Susie. I don't know where she is. So we, we, oh, come, yeah, yeah. we have, we have a fourth partner and we started out with, with five partners, Aaron Brewer moved to the West coast, um, I think probably a little after this time. So mm -hmm. um, Susie may join us. You can look for her if she's if she um, joins in. Just to put that out there. <laughs> anyway, we just heard, we just did shows like this, and and uh, people slowly drifted into the thing. And Roberta found it and wrote wrote kind reviews early on that um, supported the shows and and attracted some something like art collectors to the place, you know, these strangers would come in from the Upper East Side or wherever with a newspaper under their arm wanting to maybe buy something. And we didn't, we weren't really prepared, prepared for, you know, that kind of commercial problem. So it, it's slow, you know, it took years to kind of get, 
sort of normal about that. And uh, I mean, basically, we were subsidizing the rent and the operation with day jobs for many, many years to just continue to produce exhibitions that we wanted to see. Um, and yeah, the the as Phil was saying, I think the the commercial side very gradually uh, happened um, over time. You know, so the the shows were not necessarily paying for themselves. Yeah, not much has changed. That is also true. Yes. <laughs> well, this is your um, almost your twenty fifth anniversary, right? Or it is your twenty twenty fifth, nineteen ninety nine. You said so. This is twenty twenty four. It does you know. In, yeah. in, in 25 years, at what yeah. point do you think you became... We're going to quit? Oh, no. Oh. No, I, another 20 years, <laughs> at least. Um, no, but at what point did you decide that, you know, this was a, whatever, a viable, semi, what, functioning? I mean, semi-commercially viable? Or, I don't, I don't I think, think we just... Was, yeah. Go ahead, Sarah, sorry. Well, I was just going to say, I think it, it was, it was, I don't know, somewhere seven, eight, nine years in we maybe it was yeah we we kind of looked at our expenses and looked at what we were making i was cleaning houses i think wit and phil were both doing carpentry and susie had an office job um and we looked at how much we were bringing in with our day jobs and we looked to see if the gallery could kind of cover cover those pretty meager expenses and that's when we all kind of decided to quit our day jobs more or less at the same time. And then this became the day job. Mm -hmm. And um, and, and when you say it's artists run, I mean, well, the, the idea of a collectives or, I mean, do you consider yourself a collective or is there a difference between that and artists run or is that just specifically how, you know, it happens in, in each uh, organization? What's the collective again? Like, no, uh, I just was, well, I was, I was curious. I, mean, you were... it's, I think it's different from, a, from what I understand of a collective. There's a couple around here where I live in Massachusetts where like all the artists kind of pay money on the rent and then they have a show every, you know, kind of spread out within the rotation, which seems a little different from the like way. Like a co-op gallery sort of? Yeah, thing. it's more of artists, you know, it's just that they're artists that, that own it and and run it but you know i think that they're also i think, I think it's we, for a lot of galleries but there's a lot of artists that work here not everybody that works at the gallery i mean that's why we felt like including joe and and uh and carrie and and um violet and stewart you know and there's a there's a couple of you know annette's an artist our, our registrar's an artist so there is a feeling of that there, there are there are actually artists running the gallery, you know, <laughs> making the decisions and doing the logistics and um, all of it. Yeah, well, that was my question. If it's an artist-run gallery, then in what you know, in what capacity, or how does that, what does that look like? If you, I think in all, like in almost in all capacities, like I, I, I do think that it's been very important to have the staff of work of working artists because they. They participate in, you know, in the decisions and ideas that come through the place, and that's sort of, you know, we 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 lean on on that for the thing to kind of continue uh, along. And so I, 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 you know, they, you know, the art, and you know, you know, Wallace and Sarah have maintained a busy studio practice, and a lot of the staff guys are. are have a studio practice and not everybody does and and you know i kind of stopped making art like it became it, there became these kind of conflicts of you know when when uh people started to come in and want to review shows or buy art it was like oh gosh then we you know couldn't really be showing ourselves anymore and so there, there were these there were these kind of conflicts where we had to kind of withdraw ourselves from the exhibitions proper and you know uh and be at a certain amount of arm's length from the place. And, uh, you know, like, and, 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 you know, I stopped this, my studio practice, whatever that was, I can't even remember now, but Wallace and Sarah is still a represented artist in the city, you know, elsewhere. And, and, uh, and, and most of the staff are too. So that's kind of, you know, one of the, one of the things I think that makes the place a little 
different, whether that's artist run or a collective or what, any mm-hmm. of those things. I, I never really understood exactly how to define it, but it's, those, those are just the facts. Well, I, I guess, think- because, I, you know, collectives have become, you know, I mean, they're, they're very much prized these days. I mean, there's a lot of, of them and the idea of community and- you, I remember you- I remember early on, we didn't want to really be a nonprofit. I remember there was a moment where I was like, hey, should we be a nonprofit? Or, 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 what does that mean? And and I think we all kind of felt like, oh no, we should really compete with these, you know, big galleries that are doing all this weird damage to art or, you know, or, you know, maybe it's not all- Or good all sometimes. It's your yeah. goods, but, you know, but, but, but at least be in the mix of that. So to have some, you know, kind of, uh yeah involvement or influence. yeah i think there was a there was a willingness to not you know ghettoize ourselves for lack of a better word in some sort of other we wanted to be in the the most competitive the most bumptious the most crazy thing which was the commercial art world you know yeah we felt we could compete you know so or you know it was valid and yeah the only thing it kind of lacked like the you know, a whole pile of money. Yeah, that was That's interesting. That. You know, it's it's very interesting because I had a totally different take on what you, your organization was uh, like. I mean, I really did think I had a different notion of what artists run meant, and I actually probably thought you were a nonprofit. Um, this, yeah, no, it's it, disabusing. It's a but big I think, cor- I think, it's a corporate secret. I think if you know if we if you go back to the, if you go back to the beginning and you just you know it's I mean it's a little you know that that word of community it's like I do remember you know when we built the second gallery well when we built the first gallery even um, like literally physically built it um, it was us and a bunch of artists mm-hmm. so, it, so um, there it definitely beyond the fact that the artists run it and now there's you know a lot of artists that work here um it really was like literally built with a community of artists that were beyond us other people that just pitched in i mean mahalchik is on here he was around back then like i remember idis and anka you know helped sheetrock idis was doing sheetrock at the time so he came in and i think he and anka she did the the mudding and the you know <laughs> we, exactly. we put the sheetrock up they mudded it because he was really good at it so there was this thing that i think was you know a little bit different from maybe other the way other galleries uh come together both figuratively and physically where it was built by artists just whoever was hanging around at the time and who we oh, were yeah. committee with whose studios mm-hmm. we were in involved in you know we it, it was it was a community that was based around art and talking about what mm-hmm. everyone was doing in their studio at the time. And then, you know, we'd go over the gallery and be sheetrocking or, you know, a, a, another artist friend of Wits did the electric, someone else did the plumbing. Um, and then we, you know, put up an art show. It's kind of with it definitely, yeah, it had that workshop um, atmosphere where you're kind of exchanging ideas while working, I think, and maybe we weren't working on artwork but there was this sort of uh exchange and conversation going on around what we wanted to build and i remember a lot of a lot of the program and a lot of the ideas of the gallery came through physically putting a space together you know and i think uh that was a, a slow process but it was also really um meaningful to the to the um structure of the place you know to get back to that idea of uh, the underpinnings of it, it did, it did come out of this, um, work mentality, like let's get together and do some work together. Um, and the galleries great gradually changed, you know, slowly, 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 you know, um, that has just, dis- you know, something else has replaced it. You know, I think the art world has forced a certain type of professionalization, but I think, you know, I think we've clung on to the, the idea that artists uh, have agency and they should be listened to. And it's not just like an adjunct part of this, the process, but it's like central, you know, I think that that's part of, part of what Sarah's talking about for sure. And, you know, I mean, we, we still do, you know, do work together and it is a little bit, you know, it's like talking about it. It's like, Oh God, I sort of miss, you know, miss that time. But, you know, you know, cause we have like, 
I, I'm going with who, who I can see here on the screen. You know, I got Joe and, and Stuart there, you know, sitting in the their downstairs, you know, um, where they work a lot with the preparator, preparatory works and carry and, you know, we still all work together. We, you know, it, 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 the difference is, is like back then they would have been working. We all would have been working for free, you know, exactly. And yeah. hanging out. And, um, and now, you know, people, some, some, you know, people are being paid and it, there may be this professionalization, which I think everybody could at least agree that it's maybe a double-edged sword, you know, I'm not yeah. going to all bad but you know because we're you know people are being supported and and that's a good thing and for their work yeah funny, but um you know there I, I do miss a little bit of the i think one of the things that we've you know that we try to do with very varying levels of success is how do we keep the the discussion within our own team you know still have room to be focused on on art and everybody's creative process or creative, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever they're interested in. Um, and that's, it is hard. It, it does feel harder. I don't know if, if, if anybody else, um, you know, Mahalchik or even Violet or, you know, Carrie or Stuart or Joe want to talk to any of that, or if it's too, too, too weird to talk are about. You, are right you now. nervous you're going to get fired or something? If you have something negative to say? Fired. <laughs> Criticism. No, I mean, I think... <laughs> I want to hear from these. I mean, we've we collect all these. You know, there's a lot of other people. You know, I, I want to hear all chicks. I mean, is that all baloney, or is that you know, what's your you know? I know what my experience is, but I want to yeah, like what Sarah's saying, like Mahal chick. What do you think? What do you remember? Is he here? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Sorry, I was looking how to turn my sound back on. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess, I mean, my experience of Canada has been, it's, I, I've been there, I've been involved with Canada since pretty much the beginning. I remember being under it, uh, the first going to Canada when it was under, in the basement on Broadway and you had to climb over a pile of trash to get into the gallery. <laughs> Because uh, or, or uh, go down the uh, scariest elevator, uh, man. I don't know. Um, and it just felt like a a very open place, not uh, so engaged in a you know felt artist centric. And I think it's always been that way. You know, I've never had any uh, uh, questioning of any kind of crazy idea that I wanted to do in the space. You know, so I think the first big show I did there, I think we did, I put together a performance series that every single night the exhibition was open, there was a different performance, which was crazy to, to try to put together, but they were always very, everyone there has always been very supportive of any kind of crazy idea. And you could see in some of the slides, they had, uh, you know, I think uh, there was an image earlier of Eunice Kim's exhibition there, where uh, she papered the whole gallery and uh, newspapers and things like that. So everything was, uh, it's always been a kind of free place to, uh, not, not very many restrictions on uh, myself as an artist showing with Canada. They've always been very supportive of whatever crazy idea I might have come up with. Does anyone else want to contribute to that? It, uh... I mean, have you sensed a change and from that, you know, I mean, well, back to the other question about programming and, and, you know, how, how has, I'm looking at some of these pictures and the difference between like the early exhibitions and the later ones, um, they visually seem to be different also, but of course these are just selected, you know, shows, but it seems much more like a, uh, it seems more um, decorous these days. <laughs> um, so I don't know, how does, how has the programming changed perhaps? And, and who does, who decides on the, the, the programming I, of the shows? I don't, I don't think it's, uh, I think the shows are kind of similar. I, I don't, I think the lighting is better now. 
you know, and um, <laughs> the, the floors are kind of flatter and, um, yeah, you know, I think that, you know, there's maybe more space base for the objects so you know the things are a little more air, kind of aired out or something but I, I think that the the content is quite consistent actually um mm -hmm. and uh I, I think we wouldn't really have it any other way I mean I think you know I think the performances are they have a little more uh you know kind of kind of you know odor to them than the, in these flat things on the walls these paintings but um you know there's, there's still the same players basically everyone's just kind of gotten older maybe that's made things look a little different that you know the artists are you know they're no longer 25 for the most part mm -hmm. the average age must be now like closer to 50 yeah, I mean, I think Phil said something once about galleries being like generational places like, you know, Leo Castelli was the same age as Rauschenberg or what, you know, or similar age and how a gallery grows with a group of artists, you know, and then they have a, a finite lifespan and it's sort of the lifespan of the artists that they are most involved with, you know, and I think you're kind of seeing that in the the images you know the earlier shows are a little rougher but the, the the artists are the same and the sort of the ideas are the same but you know they've you know and i personally i'm grateful for the the heating you know that you don't have to you know shiver mm -hmm. under a tarpaulin all winter long you know it's sort of uh you know i think it's there's a kind of a graciousness to the people that work there <laughs> that this the physical spaces are more um you know refined or whatever um but yeah i mean i i I don't think the art, I kind of agree with Phil. I think the art is more mature and different, but sort of the same as well. You know, that there's a, there's a, um, there is something about like abstraction, color, scale. Um, there's a, you know, there's a type of openness inside the, of the work, I think, and kind of a generosity that I think kind of runs through the program. And I kind of see that throughout, but maybe that's what I'm looking for. But um, yeah. So, so you, does that this mean is, this is Mahalchik? This is Mahalchik stapling some bacon to the wall during one of his performances. This was maybe your third show or second show of the gallery. Third, I think it was the third. Can you talk about that piece a little, Michael? Because that was very memorable uh, in many ways. Uh, I don't think oh, it's... Yeah. There we go. I turned my mic off. Um, yeah, this is, gosh, what show is this? This is maybe my fourth show at the gallery. Unnatural Desires? And, uh, <laughs> no, it, I think Unnatural, uh, I think uh, the second one was Unnatural Desires. I think the. I think it's from Inside. So this might have been Inside. the fourth. No, in, no, this is an Inside. Yeah, that was the first oh. one. Insides was the first. This was it. it. Right. IT. This was yes. from it. Yeah, IT. And, uh, So, yeah, this was the. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I I thought. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just oh, jumping I, into a pause. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, so I guess this is a good example of, <laughs> um, uh, of, of of working, uh, showing at the gallery, and any crazy idea that I might come up with was not off the table. <laughs> um, and I think uh, you know, stapling bacon in the wall. Uh, is definitely uh not every not every gallery would be open to to uh, to, to, to uh, maybe such uh crazy uh but you didn't just staple it you also or there's like a george foreman grill in the corner well i mean though with the way that, that the way that exhibitions work is that all the materials were brought in for for the show and then the performance involved assembling the sculptures during the performance so the performance started out in the dark and then there are sort of lighting elements to the uh the, that were in there that were turned on eventually so the performance probably went about an hour long and then as it proceeded it got a little brighter and brighter and then when you left the gallery when the lights finally all came on the show was assembled finished and it was a kind of 
more traditional sculpture type of show, uh, I would say. The the process but, was, but it looked of, like you were you looked like a genius because it was like oh he took all this crap and he made these sculptures out of it like in the run of this performance but it was all planned yeah. out ahead of time yeah it was all choreographed how it was going to come together over the run of the performance so the when you walked into the gallery it was all these sort of it looked like trash garbage basically um scattered about the gallery and so it, it seemed very random then it sort of came into order during the performance mm -hmm. One one thing I don't we didn't really talk about, which is maybe an aside, but also feels kind of relevant to the to you know talk about the through line for all these shows is we we have and all mm -hmm. the galleries. I, mean, I guess there's been four galleries, and the first one we built out on our own. Um, but every every space after that was designed by Common Room, who's uh, our, our friends who have an architecture firm, and we we met them through. Elena Pankova, who was an artist that we show, her husband was part of that that architecture team. And I think that the spaces, you know, it, it kind of came to me when Witt was talking about like appreciating the comfort of, of the spaces. And I think um, that they just kind of shout, just want to sh basically like shout out to them because I think they've really helped us to make spaces and even this last space, which might be quote, kind of refined, um, still feel comfortable and kind of have a humanity to it and an openness to it, the way the office is designed and having mm -hmm. the stuff like that. So I think that, that, that I've just, I mean, really appreciate, I think we all have really appreciated their, their through line and the, their gift of just creating spaces that we've been able to to work in and really um yeah really enjoy mm -hmm. yeah and i think that that they listen to what we wanted and i think part of it is a type of permeability between the audience and the gallery like there isn't that sort of pen penalty box situation that you see in chelsea where there's a high, high three-quarter wall and someone typing furiously behind it but there is maybe a little more of an opportunity for um engagement and sort of exchange you know so i think that that you know has gradually gotten harder as the gallery's gotten more um busy but i think we wanted to maintain that sort of um informal quality that um was embedded in the first gallery just out of necessity that it was just a big room with someone sitting there this is one of the 30 nights of performance or whatever. Luciana Achugar that Mahalchik uh, curated and that whatever that show was. And this is a David Askevold, a David Askevold performance where he collected a bunch of glass and mirrors and just th threw them one by one into the big room. Um this is more recent performance series put together by Peter BD, who did um, how many night Joe and <laughs> Joe and Stuart and Carrie. I'm too scared to ask you to speak to this, but um, they they handled all the the you know the heavy lifting on on this show. It was it was a week of performances. Um, which the month long was a was intense, Mahalchik, but this week was almost like a month long, packed into a week. It was also pretty intense. Um, Back then, when we did the month, we didn't. There was no employees at the gallery except for Wit. Wit was there for every performance. I feel. I think I'm very proud the, of that fact. Yes. I'm still <laughs> my liver for, is still recovering actually yeah. well, like so I mean everything was very uh we had to make everything very quick and easy for those 30 the, those 30 days of performances you get the hook was, out yeah yeah <laughs> on and off <laughs> just move it through yeah no but it's great it became a legendary thing sometimes there were more performers than audience members <laughs> audience members yeah which, and I remember one performer did say like, oh, that's okay, this will go right to legend. 
you know, that, yeah. uh, which I think is like a nice, a nice idea that it, well, and a lot of interesting thinking... people oh. showed up to the to that that series. You know, I think Rosalie Goldberg showed up, Matthew Barney showed up once. I mean, all kinds of crazy people came yeah. by, came through during that. And a lot of the people weren't really, you know, performance artists. They were sort of had an idea for a performance and did it. Yeah. You know. Well, you included. <laughs> me included i'm not a performance artist but yeah i i tried it and uh you know um i moved back to painting you know immediately <laughs> and this series <clears throat> if you want to go back this last kind of set of um slides was a this performance and i, I think i mean i kind of i do really <clears throat> i know i keep trying and they're they're staying quiet but want to bring um Joe and Carrie and and Stuart and especially for this, you know, um, Joe has uh, is a filmmaker and a photographer, and was able to do, you know, for this week long. I mean, maybe can you guys talk a little bit about this? It was just so supported by the by the team and these team. Part of the reason they could support it so well is because they are um, in the field and. Um, and it, yeah, they're getting paid, but it was pretty above and beyond what they did to support this. I mean, there were so many people through the gallery. I think there must have been in in five nights. I think there were probably, I don't know, maybe like forty performances. Yeah, it was a lot. It was a, a extreme week of of performance, but uh, it was fun. Good. Uh, we brought in Carrie's partner Dante to do some additional lighting tech and we rented a bunch of gear so it sort of transformed the space into like a theater basically for a week with lighting and sound and um each night uh anything from poetry readings to um sketches and showing films so we had projectors set up and um they would come in ahead of time and give us a tech rundown and we'd kind of speed through all the necessary uh changes throughout the night so it was intense but i feel like it went pretty well right. yeah it was. and it took and, you guys kind of being involved to do it like i don't know how we couldn't have done it without you like with i think with outside hired help or something it just wouldn't have been the same um yeah a lot well, of shout out to shout out to chicken at canal light and sound who mm -hmm. did a lot of uh, tech r d for us um it was great to sort of like be coordinating on Canal Street properly in terms of our tech needs too. Mm -hmm. And there's also the Slumber Nights series that Sadie Alaska did. So throughout, I feel like even since I've worked here like 2015 and on, there's been a few long engagements of performative kind of mm -hmm. uh, sessions as it, as it were. 24 hour jam. That's right. Nice reader. We did a 24-hour performance. Um, what is your experience? Uh, I mean, we invited you guys here and we wanted you to talk, um, just hearing about like the mm -hmm. gallery and what uh, what your experience is versus what the company line is. Um, I mean, is I that, think... Um, you, you know, I think so one thing that, um, I've kind of admired about the gallery, if you just think of its, um, program, um, ahead of its kind of, uh, origin story, um, is just the kind of spectrum of, uh, different approaches to say painting, um, that I think has kind of, it's kind of amazing to me that, um, you know, you can have an artist like wait, you're down in Miami hanging a dental Hurley show and how, you know, that work can um, be in the same program as somebody like Catherine Bernhard and somehow through the context of the gallery, it kind of coheres in this sort of uh, interesting sort of rigorous way that, you um, doesn't even necessarily have a sort of aesthetic through line. Um, so I don't know, that's one of the interesting things that I found being, you mm -hmm. know, uh, an artist and, and stuff. Do you think that that is unique to Canada or is it just uh, a matter of 
the artist we sh i mean is that is is that a stance in, in uh, some sense or is it just an accident or what's your sense of how it works as a mechanism you know um as far as like a curatorial point of view i mean i guess that that's something that's kind of developed over time but i also feel as if so many people who show at the gallery have kind of um kind of got into that stage where they're showing with the gallery sort of through you guys so i mean i guess the context is you guys right it's the people who start the gallery and the kind of community of people that you've pulled into it mm -hmm. you know, like it's not very often that you kind of go shopping for new artists for better or for worse right you know, you yeah know, maybe you're doing more of that but it's like you know you kind of refer to the gallery as being this kind of generational thing and i think that a lot of people you know like maholchik and siler and denzel that you've only been working with him more recently is someone who's you know were in has been in your life for a really long time so yeah i think you know but i mean i'm sure that that's like true of every gallery to an extent you know right right well there's a no that that notion of like loyalty you know to a, yeah. a, a sense of a mission maybe um yeah. which i'm you know Right. personally i think is there and uh you know and it does it does hurt when a, I, I also and a relationship ends badly you know someone goes somewhere else but uh right but you also like want your gallery to be able to sort of match the ambition of the artists that it's showing um and you know having like what is this the fourth space that you've been in yeah so sort of having had that opportunity to kind of level up accordingly to offer sort of a new kind of context and platform for people's work as as they work yeah i think that's a good point i think that uh, the the big monster room that we had on on broom street i think helped Catherine create a new body of work that um right is is uh you know a, a very uh important um development in a painter's life and i think that that the room challenged her to move the practice in a certain direction and totally and i i, I seem to remember you at that time too kind of talking about how you know it was like oh she saw that like michael williams was making massive paintings and then she was like well i guess i can make even bigger paintings and there was this kind yeah of there's like a there's sort of a competition a, a competition within the artists you know they're looking at each other you know which is that thing sarah was going about talking about with like community community is it just a kumbaya thing i think it's also like a driver you know that there is this yeah. way that you're looking over your shoulder like that guy did it and i want that and i'm going to do it yeah I, I've, I've seen that happen again and again and it's you know i think it's a very important part of um being a working artist to kind of have that uh you know community again is sort of a strange word but you know that sort of uh bar that you have to clear you know yeah. the, 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 there's sort of a standard and uh you know a level you know that um that you can clear or disregard and you know one of yeah other. or whatever go under yeah. go around yeah. uh you know but there's something there to sort of push against I'll or push to back. to be aware yeah. of or something you know I, li I like what you said Stuart, about the 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 gallery kind of and i think it's it really is true to what I, my experience too the gallery feeling a need to keep par with the level of the artists and I think that that's true with the, you know, like you said about the spaces where the, the space, it, and maybe this goes without saying, but I'm not sure if it it's this way at, at other galleries or not, but that it's not like, let's build this amazing space and then find these artists to, to activate this space. It's the exact opposite. It's like, let's build these spaces both physically and whatever, psychically, spiritually, all of it, that is going to be able to um, do the best work and to advocate and, and hold the artists rather than the, the, the other way around where we're like building some, some big container and then we figure out how we how we're going to fill it up and the artists are working kind of like the artists make the gallery work it's really it's really the opposite it's like the gallery is there to primary function 
to support the artists where, where they are and to help them, you know, to allow them to be able to grow the way they need to grow. These are Joe stills from Joe's. Oh, you have, one. this is, these are marked at least Joe's movies. You know, and Joe has also done, and Stuart a lot too, um, have done, it, the photography for all the artwork was originally done by Phil and 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 Joe and Stuart now do all the photography in house, which um, it, it's a small kind of technical thing, but I really really love it um, that that kind of all the art that comes into the gallery go, goes goes down to the basement and 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 either Joe or Stuart takes the photographs and then those photographs get sent to the whole team that, you know, it feels like such a lifeline where every, you know, every piece of art that's getting either sent to another place or put up in our gallery or just coming in for inventory gets come in and, and, and photographed in the gallery. And then everybody gets to see those photos. It's kind of a rhythm of, of like in the email inbox. Um, you know, and that started because Phil was a photographer and then, you know, and Joe's a photographer and um, Stuart had enough art sense to be able to become a photographer. Um, so would you say you tap all your artists for their, um, for their skills? I mean, to, to, become integrated into the, well, the de definitely am I thinking even of like Luke Murphy built he's an artist that we represent he built our first website um and he he's a programmer and um he eventually passed it off to our oldest son who was in high school at the time who ran the second iteration of that website and then since then it's been you know Luke was too busy and our son was too busy but We've had other people do it, but definitely we tap whoever, you know. Um well, you've also pay people now because yeah, you kind of have to, you know. Yeah, like like Carrie's um partner Dante in his own work, maybe you can speak to that. You know, he came in and helped out with the tech, and that's part of his own, like he has that in his own his art practice. So he was equipped for helping with the performance. Um We've had Mark Hunley has um, done, did a, a batch of design work. Mark Hunley, who's some of the installations we saw during this presentation, he's done some of the graphic design for the gallery. Um, furniture builds too. Furniture, yeah, furniture building. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, the, like going back to that thing that Stuart was talking about, the diversity in the program I think is is a reflection of the interests of a broader partnership, mm -hmm. you know, and us wanting to uphold different modes of art practice, and uh, not it's not through the filter of one mind and one person and one individual's sort of taste or driver, and uh, I think that that you know, as a model, we get used to it. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of turning over and looking over your shoulder and going like, hey, anyone else here have an opinion on this or a feeling around this? And and that's been very kind of, a, that's been kind of a constant, you know, that the larger group is reliable to participate in the, you know, day-to-day -day and, um, and right down to maybe the uh, the way the shows are hung and the way the artists are spoken to and uh, you know kind of cared about. So it's kind of it is kind of a a, a, a co op like that or you know commune or something like that it does have that kind of feel that there is a more than a one source for these ideas. Mm -hmm. Does that apply to the the shows? Um, I think so. Yeah, I think yeah, that, who the shows, right? You know, the shows, of course, are you know their their solo works are driven from the studio and by the artist, mm -hmm. sure. But I think that that the the selection, you know, or the kind of distill, you know, the distilling down to this artist should do this solo show now, and then next month it should be that artist, and and that 
that kind of um, that divergent kind of quality that Stuart was talking about in the program, I think comes from this, you know, kind of, kind of multi-headed uh, organism. I think like in an early uh, review, um, I think it was uh, around the show, New York's Finest, which was kind of a roundup of painting in the city at that time, which was back in 2004 or something, five. She said the gallery was laissez-faire, but means it, you know, this sort of like insistence on multi, you know, whatever, multi multiple voices, you know, and that that's, a, that's not like a mistake or, a, you know, something that's like actually built into like a, an idea of of what a gallery could be um and yeah and i think the way that the art world i mean we do many many art fairs and i think the way that the art world prefers things is more um professionalized in a certain level and i think we've certain of succumbed to that on some some ways but also i think that there is this um multivalent kind of approach still continuing mm -hmm. you know i think that the art market doesn't doesn't understand another model besides you know so and so's art gallery you know this is one dealer's vision of what the art world should be and you can kind of go to it for a um a specific answer you know each each time but the, the, there is this sort of messiness that um i think is kind of obvious when you look at the slides in a certain way, but there is that sort of energy that maybe comes from that. Yeah, well, messiness can be applauded at times, right? Yeah. Um, maybe one last question. Uh, we have time, I think we do, right? So, um, but just in terms of the, the number of artists you represent, um, could you said that you've kept a lot of the same artists. It, am I understanding that correctly from, from the beginning? and? Uh, and I'm wondering how, you know, what is your, what, what are the the numbers that you can uh, meaningfully uh, represent? I think every, yeah, I think every community has an outer limit to okay. the, the amount of people it can actually hold. And I don't know what that number is, but, um, and we've been around so long, I think we have a lot of artists and uh, we're loath to let go of people. People have, you know, left, so to speak, or whatever but there's it's a, it's a large group and it's probably at the close to maximum that you can maybe sustain it I'm not sure. I, I think it, it also you know it, it certainly we you know there's been this commitment to to kind of grow with the artists that we've always had but I, I also yeah know or my experience has been is that you know we also really uh value and we are slow at bringing in new new artists, but I don't. But I but I don't think it's because we don't value it. I think it's almost the opposite. It's like, um, you know, we're pretty slow because we we understand that the relationship between a gallery and an artist is is a very deep relationship, and it's not something that we take lightly. Um, and the responsibility, I think we we feel pretty deeply about the responsibility that we have. Um, with working with with the artists so just just to just to, to balance out i you know i do think um yeah there's there's a we put a lot of value on bringing new work into the gallery as well and um we're, we're, we're pretty slow at it but it's not not because it's not important and we don't see the importance of also you know it, it just brings air into the into the the dynamic you know it it, it just you need you kind of do need new people and new new perspectives and um all that to kind of keep the thing yeah with enough oxygen to stay healthy right absolutely <laughs> e eleanor are, are you going to do the chat room i mean yeah um are there yeah thank you lily and um, thank you so uh -huh. much for this really inspiring and insightful conversation. It's been so, so great. Um, we've got a couple questions here from the audience. And if anyone would like to ask a question, I encourage you to raise your hand or write a message in the chat. But our first question today will be from Andrew. Andrew Wilbright. Hi, everyone. 
Uh, thanks for an awesome uh, talk today. Really appreciate it. Um, I just wanted to ask a question about going off of that idea of responsibility. And it feels to me from the outside of the gallery in the last couple of years, you've really taken on the role of showing some artists uh, who, you know, from the past, you know, like there's the Denzel Hurley show, there's a support Sir Foss, Elizabeth Clay, Joan Snyder. And it really seems like in the last couple of years, while maintaining the relationships of your current artists, you've also been trying to kind of reclaim or recover lost histories. I'm wondering one, if that, is how you're thinking about it too. And also just like who you feel responsible for as your gallery continues to grow and uh, builds a platform that people consider. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, I think, uh, you know, the gallery it was really noted at the, for finding really young, un, you know, never shown before artists and made a name on that. And, um, we still show a lot of those people. And I think, uh, I don't know, there's just a desire. I think we felt like we could do that. We could like, um, show like the support Sir Foss work and do it justice. And, it, and, and it was done in a different way than say like MoMA would do it or something like that. You know, that, that there was trying to find the correct fit, like Joan, I think is like maybe an artist that um, a lot of the people that we show respond to. So I think that that, you know, it, was, it just made sense to kind of bring it. So it, it was sort of like finding the fit, you know, um, and um, yeah, make it, it made sense. And also, you know, doing an Elizabeth Murray show, for example, or, you know, showing Denzel, you know, these are things that were like, we're almost like, training to do at the early days you know like these are artists that were like important to us and we finally felt like i mean i'm just speaking for myself here um maybe phil and sarah and everyone else has another point of view but it, that was very satisfying to, to be able to to build a container to really do justice to some more historical work that maybe um needed a play needed another venue needed another context um, and we could bring whatever we do to that, like conversation a little bit, but that's, I'm glad you noticed that. <laughs> yeah. And I think, you know, to be th thinking back and it was kind of cool to look at these pictures with everybody today, but even from the beginning, like, um, when we were showing David Askevold and Gerald Ferguson and we, you know, from right from the start, we, sh we were showing some artists that already, you know, were, certainly our senior and had had full careers that um you know we were c coming in real late to um and i guess the only thing i'd i'd add is that um again like i think the 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 the, the artists that we've shown at that stage like denzel and joan came directly through you know denzel was an old uh professor of, of wits and wit was a studio assistant of Joan and in, introduced us to her work. Long right. Time ago. Yeah. So, and th these are people who we had really, you know, it's almost like showing your, your mentor or your, th these people that we really admire. It wasn't like coming from a premise of like, Oh, let's bring some people that we, you know, who are we going to show? Because we right. want to type of gallery that revives, you know, or like it was the exact opposite. It was really just coming from this desire, like, you know, working with Joan, Joan Snyder. Um, it's like, it's it comes directly from the desire of like I want to see those paintings in person. I want to see that show. I want to work with that work. You know, and and I know the same. You know, for Denzel or, you know, for 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 Jerry Ferguson, seeing these. You know, we had a show mm -hmm. street recently, and it was just so so great to get to see those works. And that's why we do the shows. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I would say that, you know, the age too is like abstract you know like when kathy bradford kind of showed up i don't even know how old she was you know really like it wasn't part of it you know it was just like kathy was coming to the openings kathy gave a shit about the program kathy's paintings were getting weird and uh people in the program adored kathy 
So mm -hmm. we should go to visit visitor studio and, and give it darn. And, uh, and I, you know, it's it, how old she was or Joan too, you know, it's like Joan happens to be 83, but her paintings are, are very to topical and important. And uh, sorry, I'm supposed to turn off my phone. And so, you know, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, I, I just don't think that much. I mean, you know, when, when you know, when David dies, you lose a lot, you know, when the, mm -hmm. when the artists pass, pass on and they're gone, it's, yeah, that's when I noticed it. You know, it's like, oh, that's when there's this giant silence that, uh, you know, is remarkable and, and hard to, hard to fill with, with, uh, mm -hmm. with, with just their work. And that, that's always the thing that you know is is the is the real shift how old they are yeah you know, whether they're here even, or not is a big deal yeah yeah it's it's just i don't yeah you know when they're gone it's hard that's that's that that's the yeah. one thing I really no, know. and that's the thing about being an older you know being doing the gallery for so long you begin to lose people and what you what you lose when they're gone is it's mm -hmm. impossible to even know when it is just starting out, you know, you just assume it's going to be like this forever. And then when they're gone, it's like, wow, they're really gone. And there's a lot missing. Mm -hmm. um, and that that goes to the community discussion, like what they're adding in a conversation or what they're adding as their presence. So mm -hmm. that's, that's well put, you know, Phil. Yeah. Thank you I, so much. Oh, sorry, go on. I, I have to say goodbye. <laughs> but thank you for the discussion. And uh, Keep keep going, but yeah, thank you for every, everything. Thank, thank you, you thank you, Wallace. Thank you so much, Andrew, for that question. See you, Wit. Um, Wit's down in Florida installing a Denzel Hurley show at the museum there. So, our next question will be from Amanda today. Amanda, I'll allow you to unmute if you'd like. I can also ask on your behalf. Um, uh, hello. Hi. Hi. Um, hi. How is everyone? Thank you so much for uh, the talk. I've been uh, tuning in in transit. But um, I had a question about, um, you know, your, all, all of your identities as artists that have expanded and changed as a result of um, having this gallery become such a success and a big part of your lives and how perhaps some of the things you've learned through that journey, you've brought back into your, your own practices. I'm not sure if this answers your, your question exactly, but I, I will say that, um, you know, I mean, and maybe this seems so obvious, but the, the you know, the one of the hugest gifts about being able to be involved in this is just the close proximity and again the deep relationship with the artists um and that absolutely um comes back to the studio you know it just um just being able to work with artists in the studio and towards an exhibition and just all you know for whatever you know through the whole through all of it um and getting to yeah, no, 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 that work intimately is, is such, such an influence in the studio. Um, and adds, you know, just in the same way that you, I think, you know, people find it in their own, you know, their, their own communities, or you might find it when you're in art school or something like that. But I think as an older artist, it's kind of maybe a little bit harder to keep those relationships up. Um, and a dialogue with with other artists. So this gallery has been such a gift for that reason. And I'm not sure if that answers your question directly, but that that's what came to mind. I, I think uh, you know the, the thing is a kind of an instrument, and it's a kind of an art practice in itself. You know, like. I, I don't do a studio. I don't go to a studio anymore and make uh, make things, uh, art objects. Uh, but the you know there is this kind of you know ma management of this big weird instrument that is uh, a, you know it's not it's not it's a it's an art uh, object of its in its own 
in its own way. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't know if that answers anything, but I, I do, I do like to think of it that way. You know, that the, there is this kind of strange performance, uh, to, to keeping this thing running that is akin to a kind of art artwork. Do you guys, uh, Stuart, Joe, Carrie, Violet, have any any thoughts on that, or is that? <laughs> There's stuff. I mean, this is this isn't necessarily also about the 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 artist represented, but there's always this great annual. Um, Whit left, but he'd probably be able to talk about this too. Canada Summer Institute sort of reading um, collection of, of work that kind of gets thrown in by everybody at the gallery. And we just put it together and, and um, have discussions in, in some, somewhat of an installment way where people get to kind of bring about what they're thinking about in their work. And there's just a lot of questions about why that get brought into it. And also that has been really great to kind of bring everyone's you know, thoughts either within the studio or just in general um, together in a, in a nice sort of structured way that has been super beneficial as well. I'd also say like, you know, a lot of the other artists showing at the gallery have uh, because we're showing at other places or just dealing with being active showing artists, I can say that Canada's model for representing and showing people sort of defies like what I would say is a scorched earth policy that a lot of younger galleries are adopting, which is this like inch deep, mile wide, you know, sort of like show a lot, see what sticks commercially and then go with that. Um, so it's like, it's inspiring to see the gallery sort of follow the careers of these people whose work changes over time um, and stay committed to it. And I'd also say that um, for anyone that's done something like handling, um, it's basically notorious that gallerists won't look at the work of the people doing labor at the gallery. And, uh, you know, my experience at Canada has been the opposite of that so it's been cool to be like acknowledged professionally at work um, aside from the actual tasks that you know we perform that's great thank you so much for that question amanda um and that was our last question in our audience q a um if anyone else would like to ask a question, anyone from Canada, feel free if you want to ask each other anything. I think Sarah kind of started to do that. No more questions out there? We just got one. No, it's just, yeah. Um, yeah, Chloe is going to ask a question that just came in, actually, so. Hey, everybody. Um, I just got this question directly from Jessica, and I'll read it to you all for your replies. Um, a great talk. Very inspiring. Thank you. Could you speak to how your values have been guiding your operations in the most recent gallery space and neighborhood? Um, the neighborhood struck me as really dynamic. Um, what have been your considerations to the neighborhood? Um, and I know that many galleries deal with this, just asking given past current ethos, any insights, sticking points, considerations. That's a great question. It's making me think. Um... It's, it's our second time in Tribeca. Yeah. Right. You know? So we were, we were there in the late 90s, real early 2000s, and it's changed a lot. Um, you know, when we were there before, it was still artist studios. Uh, and it was, yeah, different different kind of urban fabric. Um, we Our lease ran out in, in, in the Lower East Side, and so we had nowhere to go. And, and Tribeca was kind of 
new again. And um, there was a couple of galleries there. Uh, Andrew Kreps, uh, I talked to a little bit at that time and he was encouraging. Um, Stefania Bordolami was there and she was, uh, they were kind of, I think for the early years there, they were kind of like on their own and it was kind of tricky. And uh, they, you know, it was, uh, and it's, and so we we kind of jumped in because the lease was up and we found this space that had been uh, warehouse uh, storage, you know, space for canal plastics. And so it was just this kind of big empty room and it was on Lispinard and we kind of liked it because Lispinard was a, kind of a short, block that was almost like a big pedestrian heavy block because there was not much traffic it was just ran between church the church or yes yeah, six and, and and broadway so there you know it was and uh was one way and and so you know it, it's uh it's changed a lot even in this time in, you know in the five six years we've been there um and uh you know the galleries have moved in and it's sort of getting that you know gentrifying in that weird way that is uh upsetting you know in a weird you know it's nice to see shows i guess sell everywhere but it um it's it's uh yeah it's changed you know and it i i, I it's a you know the fabric the building fabric in 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 uh in Tribeca is sturdy and they're, you know, 19th century factory spaces and they can kind of handle the galleries better. In some ways I find it, you know, easier than in on the Lower East Side where the where the buildings were smaller and they didn't, they couldn't really hold this kind of uh, work, th this business as easily. Um, I, 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 uh, I work, you know, I miss the artists, the, the fact that all these artist studios are gone and uh, all this new industry has kind of moved in, and, and one of them is these art galleries. But I, I think for the most part, it's a, it's kind of a re remarkable neighborhood. Uh, it's really nice. It's compact. Um, and the, the you can kind of get a, a, a lot of spaces in quickly that are doing, I think, justice for the artworks. You know, it's kind of there, there, there's a there's decent amount of space and air and light in them. Um, and I think that it's, uh, it's working, you know, I like, I like the area for, for, for these, for this art and art gallery stuff so far, so good. It's kind of my one take. Anybody else? Does that answer the question? I think so. Yep. Um, Thank you so much for that question. Uh, that will conclude our Q&A for today. So I would just like to thank again so much, Sarah, Phil, Wallace, Joe, Stuart, Carrie, Michael, Violet, and Lily for the really wonderful conversation today. Um, we'd also like to thank the Terra Foundation for American Art who sponsor the NSC and for uh, supporting our um, archive, which you can explore on YouTube and where this conversation will be posted very soon. The rail has been free and independent for 23 years. A donation will directly support our writers, production staff and operations. So please consider supporting us at a link in the chat and join us tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern for a conversation with Donna Dennis and Andrew Woolbright. Thank you everyone for tuning in today. Thanks again so much to Canada. And you can now turn on your microphone, say hello and good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Eleanor. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. That was thank really cool. You. Thank you. Very inspiring. Great. Bye, everyone. Thank Thanks. you. Fascinating I conversation on the that. history of Canada was something. There's a lot that thank needs you. to be said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. This is thank awesome. you. Real. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thank you.